Concerns about the tight ends and the DBs? Eliminate it after day three of camp. I'll tell you why. You are Locked On Jags, your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you guys for joining us here on Locked On Jaguars. I am Tony Wiggins, the host of the daily Locked On Jaguars podcast with the Locked On Podcast Network, where we're free on all platforms. And it's your team every day, and we thank you for making us your first listen. I had some concerns going into day three of training camp about two specific groups. One is the tight ends, because they have, they have been pretty nondescript and hadn't done anything for the first couple of days of camp. And in case you didn't know, it's been historically a bad position in Jacksonville. The tight end position has been awful for the entire time of this franchise for the most part. They had a couple of good players over the years with Pete Mitchell and Kyle Brady, but they've never really had that tight end group or that one player that really made a difference. And we're kind of sick of it, right? So I've been looking for it. They signed Evan Ingram in the offseason to a one-year $10 million sort of prove-it deal. They shocked me today. Evan Ingram looked really, really good. So did Dan Arnold and uh, a couple of other young guys. They made a lot of plays, so we'll discuss that. We're also going to get into the other group that I said on a previous podcast, I believe it was yesterday, that if there was a concern or some sort of Achilles heel or potential for an Achilles heel, that would be the DBs. Nope. They showed up again today. Now, I know the question is how uh, did the DBs and the tight ends play well? Because most of the time, tight end is guarded by linebackers. So it doesn't mean the linebackers struggled. It just means guys made plays when the plays were there to be made without any drops. Um, and they went up and made some catches that were absolutely outstanding that were a little bit beyond the X's and O's. So we're going to talk tight ends. We're going to talk DBs. I'm going to tell you why I was concerned about both groups in segment two and three. And I'm also going to uh, tell you why those concerns, at least for today, were a little bit alleviated. I'm going to get into right now, though, Press Taylor did a press conference prior to practice. And uh, first round pick Trayvon Walker did a number one overall pick. He talked at the end of practice. So I'll get you caught up with those things before I actually get into the tight ends and the DBs, the concerns, and then why I at least have a little bit of reprieve for those concerns after today's practice. Press Taylor was very, very impressive uh, this morning in his presser. Let me, I said Press Taylor and his presser. Ain't that something? But I, I will tell you this, man. If a guy sounds like someone who can be a future head coach, it's him. He looks the part, sounds the part. Everyone sort of does. I used to say that, too, about uh, Brian Schottenheimer. And then he got fired. And then uh, two years later, he became the head coach of the Denver Broncos. So there's a way, if you go to a successful team or if you start to have some success, guys can actually sound the part, look the part. And Press Taylor is very, very impressive uh, behind the microphone, how he gives out a little bit of information, how he answers the questions. And the most impressive thing, in case you guys didn't hear it, of course, you can always check it out on Jaguars.com. He spoke about how Trevor Lawrence and his day-to-day -day progression on the field, transferring things from the classroom to the meeting room from the film sessions, and then actually improving on it the very, very next day. There was a point where he said this morning where Trevor had completed a pass, and I was there yesterday, he completed a tightrope pass about 25 yards down the field to Christian Kirk. Press Taylor said that they really discussed with Trevor how there's another look because the pass that he completed to Kirk was a great toe-tap pass, but I get the feeling that the Jaguars coaches was like, uh-uh, no, 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 no. That's not going to always be there, and it's a little too risky, even though it was a great play. Here, let me show you what we need you to do. We don't always need you to make that big play. Here's that play. Look, this guy. So the very next day, Trevor comes out, does it just like that. And I and I believe that 
that's the impressive stuff that we don't always see because we're not involved and we're not privy to the the film work, the, the study sessions. And we also don't know what the overall, uh, we, we know they want to score points, but we don't understand the idiosyncrasies and the little things that are involved in the offense. The impression I get from press is let's just take what's there because it'll create opportunities for us to have some things somewhere else. We don't have to always play quote unquote hero ball because nine times out of 10, that's going to bite you in the butt. It's going to get you in more trouble, especially when you start playing really, really good teams. You won't be able to get away with that kind of stuff. So it kind of gives you the impression that they don't want them to form bad habits and they know that there's room for improvement and they're not just sitting here happy. And you got the feeling last year that they were happy because they had Trevor Lawrence at quarterback. And it goes without saying that in the past, we've had fans that have said, just take Tre- we, we, they, this franchise, in case you didn't know, was so starved for star power, especially at the quarterback position. There were really people that thought it was this was all about taking Trevor and moving out of the way. And some people were tongue in cheek when they said it, but there were some people that they almost gave you the impression that they meant it. And now you see that that's not the way it goes, that there's a golden opportunity here to really push him and press him to maximize what this is. And I think if you're going to push him, push and press, you might as well press with press as the offensive coordinator. Very, very impressed by him. Extremely impressed by Javon, uh, Trayvon Walker at the end of practice. Also, uh, Josh Allen hung around and uh, was teasing uh, Trayvon a little bit. I asked Trayvon, is Kentucky ever going to beat Georgia in football? He said, no. Josh said, yeah, I'm going to see to it. But they, uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but they have formed a really, really tight bond and they have mutual respect for each other. And I like the duo. I was telling one of my one of my uh, colleagues, Ryan the Hacker Green, I like the duo. I like the way that they work. They push each other. So we have a lot to look forward to with those two as well. i tell you what. We're going to do the, the tight end position first because I think that there's a pleasant surprise coming out of camp, especially today. And um, – Evan Ingram had a day to day. He caught some passes that really weren't. And, and this is what the Jaguar fans have always wanted. They weren't thrown where they were supposed to throw. This guy was running a crossing route, contorted his body, turned completely around. I saw a pass that Devonte Adams caught from Aaron Rodgers, which was the same way. He completely contorted his body, turned around and snagged it in the middle of the field and then took it and turned and ran right up. It wasn't just one play from Evan Ingram. It was multiple plays. I'm going to talk about his impact, how it helps the rest of the tight end group as a whole, and just to really get into the fact that I think they're finally, finally, finally going to make some way and have their way with uh, the tight end group, and that would help Trevor. So we're going to talk about the tight end group and the impact that it has on the entire football team, including the quarterback, and we'll do that in just a second here on Locked on Jaguars after I tell you guys about Dave. Dave is an app. That's D-A-V-E. It is an app that's going to help you through a tough time that a lot of us, we don't like to admit it, but sometimes we have that tough time, and that is a shortage of cash. It could be car repairs. It could be just running behind on bills. It could be just trying to make sure you can get to next week when you get your paycheck. We all have been there, and I know it's tough. It's tough to ask for help. It's not tough to ask for help if you're asking your future self for help. And that's what the Dave app allows you to do. You just download the Dave app from the app store right now. That's Dave, D-A-V-E, and sign up for an extra cash account and get up to $500 instantly. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Instant transfer fees apply. Banking provided by Evolve, which is a member of FDIC. And you'll remember the Locked On Jaguars podcast with me, T-W-I-G-G. That's what they call me, T-Wig. I've uh, covered the team now for over 13 years. Been doing the Locked On podcast for three years. And it's been a fun time doing that and bringing you guys the coverage that I can. Training camp particularly is really, really fun because it allows me to come on here and talk about the things that I see, some of the things that may be a concern. We can always revisit these podcasts because they don't ever go anywhere. They're always available to you 
on all platforms and the YouTube. So you can either make me eat my words. You can go back and say, well, you said that, right? So one of the things that uh, I've always echoed over the years about this franchise is they've never, ever, ever had great tight end play. For a lot of years, that was because they had coaches that had schemes that, in my opinion, did not emphasize great tight end play. Now, I left the name out, and I shouldn't have, because it's probably the best tight end who's ever played, and that's Mercedes Lewis. But the reason why Mercedes Lewis was never viewed as that guy and probably was prematurely let go was because he was a first-round pick, and he sort of never lived up to being a first-round pick. And a lot of teams make that mistake. A lot of teams get a guy and they have these expectations and he could be a good football player because he doesn't meet up and fulfill that expectation. All of a sudden now there's like, well, we need to go find somebody else. It's not necessarily true. It wasn't the case with uh, Mercedes Lewis. So apologies for leaving Mercedes Lewis out because he's gone on now to play in green Bay and they absolutely love Mercedes Lewis. He's about 30 some odd years old, maybe 35, 36 and he look, doesn't look like he's going anywhere. He's a professional, a consummate professional. He should still be a Jacksonville Jaguar, too, because he didn't cost that much. But that just shows you how in the past those teams did not really emphasize tight end play. You could go around the league and, and look at teams like Baltimore. It seems like they always have a tight end. Philadelphia always have a tight end. Whoever Andy Reid has always coached, they've always had a tight end. Dallas always has a tight end. It's just some team. New England seems like they always have a tight end with the exception of two or three years ago. And then they got another one. But it just seems like there are organizations that they always seem to find impact players at that position. And the Jaguars have been one of those teams that it's escaped them. They haven't been able to get that. They haven't had that. They got Dan Arnold in a trade last year. They had uh, Shaughnessy. He's not here anymore. They drafted a kid last year in the fifth round from Ohio State. He's making, you know, he's making himself known a little bit. They signed Chris Manhurts last year in free agency to a two-year deal. He's a former basketball player who happened to catch the first touchdown of the 2021 season. First touchdown was scored by Chris Manhurts, and if you bet that, uh, you, you want some money. Uh, you know, go to if you went to bet online last year and bet that, you'd have won some money because no one even expected him to do that but the Jaguars have now have a coach in Doug Peterson whose system that he comes from where they really do emphasize tight end play they believe it's a strength they believe now that they've gone out and gotten Evan Ingram and they have Dan Arnold that they have strength in that room I was skeptical and I'm still a little bit skeptical because it's so important and because neither one of those guys have had a distinctly uh, a really distinctive career uh, anywhere else at their previous stops. The New York Giant people that I know that I cover the media, I talked to Patricia Trania, uh, I at least tweeted with her about it, and uh, we changed messages. And, and for some reason, uh, the Giant fan said that he's a great guy, he just couldn't catch, and he couldn't stay healthy. What's going to be the difference here in Jacksonville? That's a great question because until today, I had not seen much. I'd heard – him speak and I heard him talk a lot about uh, the things that he wants to do and the team really put him at the forefront and I talked to some guys who covered Philadelphia guys like Mike Kay who used to be here in Jacksonville who have talked about how in Doug Peterson's system that Zach Ertz spent a lot of time over 50 percent of his time lined up isolated at wide receiver and he'd have a safety and sometimes even a linebacker on him because of some of the pre-snap stuff and those advantages are the things that you have to look forward to. So I try to take Evan Ingram and I try to sort of plug him into that role. And I'm like, how is that? Is that going to work? Today at practice, at the third day of training camp, it was working. And when I tell you it was working, it was working, okay? It was working like a brand new jet at one of these places that build planes. That thing, we had a plane in the Air Force that never cut off. It just sat on the runway, and it ran for 24 hours. That's what he looks, looked like today. He looked like a, a high-speed jet that was running all day and doing whatever he wanted to do, contorting his body, getting beyond people, running after the catch, catching hitches, catching slants. It's almost as if yesterday when the tight ends didn't do much in the 7-on-7 seven seven and 11-on-11s, 
And then today, between yesterday and today, somebody said, we need to step up. It could have also been a product of the fact that the defense played better today, especially at a defensive back, because the defensive backs got toasted up yesterday a little bit. Even though they were in position to make plays, it's just that Trevor Lawrence had the the best practice of any quarterback I've ever seen with my own eyes. So uh, I, I mentioned that yesterday. So it could be a byproduct of, okay, once things tighten up a little bit outside and guys show a, a lot of um, competitiveness, that the next thing was to check down and take the easier play and not force it. And that meant that Evan Ingram was going to get a lot of snaps. He was going to get a lot of reps. And he did. He played. He looked extremely well today for your Jacksonville Jaguars. So shout out to Evan Ingram for, for having a, a really good day and a really good practice and really distinguishing himself and setting himself apart. Dan Arnold did some nice things too. He's a tall kid. Dan Arnold like 6'6". Six, six. And um, he's able to get out. He, he caught a pass that no one should have caught uh, because it was only put where he could make a miraculous catch. And he absolutely did exactly uh, that he made an, uh, a, a, a really good catch. So how does this help Trevor Lawrence? Let me tell you how. Because when you call a play and the scheme breaks down really quick, normally you look for a buddy. The buddy is either a running back who comes out to the flat or a tight end that sits down somewhere in coverage. And he sits down where the ball doesn't have to travel a long way to get to him. The more guys you have that can do that, the more guys you have with the scheme versatility that allows them to find those little pockets and create situations where they might only get five yards, but now you're in second and five, or they may get five yards on, on second and seven. And now you're in third and two that you're in third, you're in that short situation. It's also going to help in the red zone. It helped. It'll help in the red zone where you'll have those guys. And Tom Brady has made a living, obviously throwing to Gronk and, and now he's doing it down in Tampa where you're throwing, uh, you have these mismatched throws and you're throwing at these taller guys that can get a little bit of separation in the red zone, but that can high point the ball. So that's how it helps the team. Evan Ingram's ascension to number one really helps because now you can let Chris Manhurts do what Chris Manhurts does best, which is block and then occasionally sneak out and, and use those basketball hands to make a catch. And the other thing is you're not asking Dan Arnold to do something that his talent level probably suggests he can't. You're asking him to play a role as opposed to being the lead tight end. So Evan Ingram has a chance to do that. He has a chance to really provide a lot of scheme versatility to this team. And he had a day today. And I told you that I was going to be honest with you. Yesterday, I said I was going to talk about the tight ends. You can catch the end of the episode. I said we're going to talk tight ends and DBs. And i be dang it if – those guys didn't actually give us something to talk about other than just the concern. DBs, what did they do? They played better today. It seemed like somebody whispered in their ear, y'all need to compete. And it wasn't just the frontline guys, I'll tell you. Everyone who it was in just a second on Locked on Jaguars. Before we get to segment three, I want to let you guys know about Bet Online. It's the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs, find all your favorite sports and events, at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NBA, NFL, NHL, esports, golf, and combat sports. Ask yourself, are Terrence Crawford and, and uh, Errol Spence going to ever fight, and will it be the biggest fight that we've seen in a long time? I know it'll be the biggest fight of two guys in their prime uh, in maybe a, a couple of decades, so I'm looking forward to that, but you need to Head to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action that's happening today because it continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information. Bet Online is where the game starts. You start here with us here on Locked On Jaguars every single day, Monday through Friday. We're back into the groove now, making us your first listen. But your next listen should be the Locked On NFL podcast. You can find it wherever you find Locked On Jaguars, you find Locked On NFL. I am a host uh, on Wednesday along with James Rapine, but we have hosts every single day, and it's guys from around the country, and it's a broader perspective. It's not just talking about Jaguars. It's talking about everything. So make sure you check in and tune into the Locked On NFL podcast wherever you get your podcast. 
It's free on all platforms. Make it your next listen, like, and subscribe. We're going to talk a little DBs, man. The DBs actually got a little busy today, and it was actually a very, very good uh, – it was something that, was, that we were kind of waiting on to happen because – while they didn't get destroyed yesterday by Trevor, and when Trevor had Trevor Lawrence had his great day yesterday, they also didn't make plays. And I'm 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 of the thinking that the way that they came out today, either someone lit a fire up under them, or, and and this is this is the or part, if someone didn't light a fire up under them, what they did was they realized when they went and watched tape or watched film that they weren't competing and iron chopping's iron. And we just can't let these guys get away with the things that they're getting away with. We can't just let these guys do us any type of way. So you saw them fight back. I've warned everyone in the past that there's no reason to get a, get concerned during camp because someone has a bad day. That's like getting concerned that back in the day during the Michael Jackson video, when someone couldn't get the steps, before they shoot that video, or before they go on stage, you can bet that choreography is going to be what it's supposed to be. Yesterday, they probably felt like, well, damn, ain't nothing we can do about these throws. And the little coach on their shoulder or either their coach told them, like hell it ain't, you better go compete. and You don't concede or give up anything. But they came back today with a vengeance. Guys were batting balls. They were, they were basically – and it was it was more than it was Trey Herndon, it was uh, Jones, it was Thomas the safeties. Uh, everyone was competing. I'll tell you who had a day. I'll tell you who had a day, and that was Tyson Campbell. Every single time, every batted ball at the by the end of practice during that last session, we were over on the sideline, and I think it was uh, Jordan DeLugo or Demetrius or Harvey or someone. We were all talking and. And someone made an interesting observation. They said, every time Trevor has gone deep down the sideline, all of his batted balls came from one person, and that's Tyson Campbell. That is a development because where Tyson Campbell struggled a year ago was, and this is before they kind of backed him up and they started playing differently, where he struggled was when the ball was in the air. That's the key to all of this. He actually played or uh, practiced well today while the ball was in the air and got some deflection. Someone even said that he was he, he called something Chick-fil-A and said uh, not open, you know, on Sundays. I, I, let me tell you something now. Listen, back in 2017 when the Jags had the Pro Bowl secondary, they were coming up with a name, and I promise you, and anybody who remembers me said, I want to call him pick fil because nobody's open on Sunday. So – I got to talk to Tyson about that. I might get with him tomorrow and be like, hey, man, did you, where'd you get that nickname from? Because I got tape where I said pick fillet. But uh, all, all in jest, it just shows you the confidence. It shows you the, the advancement. And he's not still doing the same things and making the same mistakes that he uh, made last year. There was one play, though, I have to tell you, that they did give up. Almost one of those, and nothing they can do about it. And I believe it was... Rayshon Jenkins. And I don't know who was at corner. I think it may have been Trey Herndon. Trevor uncorked one down the field. He had to travel 55 yards in the air. And it was double coverage. And Zay Jones split the double coverage. Double coverage. Jumped up, extended both hands, snatched the ball out of the air, came down and was able to race to the corner of the pylon and got into the end zone. And he proceeded to yell at the trees that were behind the field at Episcopal and said, stop playing with me. <laughs> and I said, he's yelling at trees. He said, stop playing with me. They're going to they're gonna quit playing with me. Something like that. So the only thing I was waiting for him was to do the little smooth criminal thing where he kind of gets up off the ground. Now, I have also heard that he does that on demand. We were talking to Dylan and PR for the Jags, and he told us that he'll do it on demand. It's not like something that just happens. He'll do it on demand where, I don't know if you've seen it, but Google it. Google Zay Jones when he was with the, both the Raiders and with the Bills, how he can get up off the ground. I don't know what kind of core muscles he has, um, but me and Mike DeRocco were like, we ain't going to volunteer. And my man, uh, Jamal, 
uh, we, we, we were sitting there saying, I don't know how he does it. So uh, we need to name it, by the way. Hashtag uh, name that move to my Twitter at Shop Talking Wig. I call it the smooth criminal. Let's come up with a name for Zay Jones being able to get up with what looks like something out of space. And uh, Google that and check that out and have a lot of fun with it. But name that move. Hashtag name that move to me at Shop Talking Wig. We're going to try to name. If you like Smooth Criminal, that's cool. But we're going to try to figure out a, a fun name for that. Uh, but interesting day today. I I, I I was starting to stand over there and and I started saying certain things. Travis Etienne had another couple of plays where once he hit open, he scooted. And I just found myself saying like those people who say get in the hole at golf games. I kept saying to myself, get out of there. So are we going to say that every time ETN starts to hit a hole? Are we going to say, get out of there? I don't know. I think it has a nice ring ring to it. Get out of there. I kind of like it. You know what I'm saying? So I think we have some things to really, really look forward to with this Jaguars team. I want to talk about a dynamic duo tomorrow, Josh Allen and Trevon Walker. There's a budding friendship there. There's a budding respect there. And could we be seeing uh, a couple of bookend guys that really, really get along and they're going to be like-minded and something that the Jaguars can brand for a long time for the long haul here in Jacksonville? Winning is the most important thing, but when you've been an organization that has struggled, you do want to look for those things that start tradition. If we had the right tradition, Fred Taylor and Jimmy Smith would be joining Tony Baselli, definitely going to Canton. So I do think as an organization, you sort of want to start getting these things going. You want to, you want to have um, things that you can hang your hat on from a longevity standpoint that really brand the football team because what it does is you get an identity from it. If you ask anybody what Jaguar football is right now, They'll probably tell you great fans, but losing organization. That's not who they are. It's what they've been, but you can actually not, you can be in something and not be of it. I think the Jaguars are on their way to attempting to try to change that. And tomorrow we'll talk about Josh Allen and Trevon Walker. And they're basically the way that they're getting along. It's like they're, they're inseparable. They're inseparable in camp. So we'll look forward to talking about that and how that could actually impact the entire team. I'm going to tell you who else is, who else is uh, like that. ETN showed up to Trevor Lawrence's press conference and vice versa. So those two guys are also, and they go all the way back to Clemson, but those two guys are also doing it. What's the importance of that? We'll talk about that tomorrow as we turn the corner to day four of training camp. But until then, you guys do what I always say. Let's just take care of each other and we'll see you tomorrow on another edition of Locked On Jaguar.